Hello, you're watching Market Week in Review for the week ending January 16th, 2015. I'm Alexandra Davis coming to you from Russell Investments Global Headquarters here in Seattle, Washington, and I'm joined today by Director of Client Investment Strategies, Mark Eibel. Welcome, Mark. Thank you. Yet again, we've seen oil in the spotlight this week. Talk about what the continued downward movement in oil has meant for volatility in the markets. Yeah, it's interesting because conceptually you would think, you know, well, oil drops, and yes, we're an energy producing country, but isn't this a good thing? I mean, we all fill our gas tanks up every week and we mm -hmm. probably feel a little bit better when we leave. So why is the market you know, dropping as you know, an input cost to us all continues to drop? I think it's because of the rate of the drop. I mean, we're looking now at a 50 to 60% drop in oil over a relatively short period of time going back to last year to now. So the markets are trying to figure it out. Is it supply? Yes. I mean, we are an energy producer, so we're putting more supply on the market, as are other players around the world. Is it a demand issue? Probably. The world economy is probably a little bit slower than we think. And we all remember Economics 101, when you have more supply and less demand, the price is going to drop. And I think a third piece of it that doesn't get talked about as much is, you know, speculators and hedge funds, they all got the blame from the public when they pushed oil or one of the inputs for oil going up over $100 a barrel. They don't seem to get any credit, though, in the public's minds mm -hmm. when it's dropping unwinding positions is probably part of it. So I think when you line all that up, that's why it's dropped so fast. Okay. I think from here, and we're starting to see a little bit of stability this week around the $45 a barrel range. If we can at least stabilize and move up from here, then I think the, the good parts about the story come through. Most of us don't pay for gasoline with cash, but we do with credit cards. And as we're now starting to see a lesser impact due to energy, on our credit card bill, maybe now the good parts start coming through that'll help out this market, but we need to find a bottom first. Hopefully, this is the week that we found that bottom. Yeah, okay, now another factor that will influence markets over the coming weeks is earnings season. Right. Talk about what we're seeing. Yeah, I mean, earnings are going on right now, and it's almost, you know, it's a back page story. Mm -hmm. So, so far, they're okay. They got off to a decent start, but we hadn't seen any of the financials, and we still haven't seen the energy companies. A lot of big financial companies came through uh, this week. They're they're okay. Uh, if you're heavily into trading, you're taking a hit on that. Uh, the big players are still paying billions of dollars worth of fines related to you know mortgages and the crisis of back back to 2008. So I don't think financials are going to really lead uh, earnings up this quarter. The energy companies haven't hit. We have to expect energy companies are going to have at least a what 20, 30 percent hit uh, directly uh, correlating with the price. Of the commodity. So when you when you say, well, I'm not going to get anything from financials and energy is going to be a hit, those are two pretty big sectors. Mm -hmm. So overall, if we can be flat to maybe slightly up, I think that's about all we can expect from this earnings season, um, which isn't a bad story. And I think, again, moving forward from here, while the energy companies will probably continue to struggle for a bit, mm -hmm. we should start seeing the positive things in other areas of our life benefiting from cheaper energy. Uh, we're just probably not going to see it yet this quarter. Okay, now Europe has certainly been in the spotlight um, as well. And in last week's episode, we talked about an important European Central Bank meeting coming up next week. Talk about expectations for that meeting and also what else is happening in that area. Yeah, I think that big meeting is a week from Friday, so the, 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 the week in review could be interesting next yep. week. So we've got two big events going on in Europe. We have the ECB meeting where uh, the markets are largely anticipating uh, some sort of quantitative easing. Uh, the size of it is really what people are, try are waiting to hear. You saw a little bit of that going on today with action. Uh, the Swiss franc was in the news today as we filmed this on Thursday. Uh, it had been pegged to the euro for the last three years. It's taken itself off of that. There's different theories on why they just did it so suddenly. One might be they're anticipating what the ECB might do next week as it relates to monetary policy. So that is a big market the market's going to wait. It's going to be all about Europe as it gets closer to that. The second thing that happens three or four days later, the Greek elections. And mm -hmm. that's back in the news again. And we don't think that, you know, that, well, here we go again with Greece. But we need to get that election over with because it has been in the news. Uh, so between the ECB meeting and the impact of the elections in Greece, I think next week could very well be a week where we pivot, at least in the short run, from oil and the focus is all going to be on Europe. We'll get some sort of resolution there. Hopefully then we'll get back to earnings uh, being the story here. Okay, well, we'll check back next week for the result of that meeting. Thank Great. you for joining us thank today. You. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.